Welcome, welcome to another episode of Buried Pleasures. I'm your hostess, Polly and Amazing. Tonight, we're going to talk a lot about the pleasure of birth control. <laughs> is there pleasure in birth control? No, actually, the topic tonight is who is responsible to pay for birth control? And I brought my really good friend from, oh my gosh, you guys renamed your show and I just almost said the old name. <laughs> Not a real court. <laughs> Not a real court. Okay, so you're talking. Go ahead and introduce yourself, sir, please. Hi, I'm Damone or Demoney, whatever you want to call me. Just not lay for dinner. Um, <laughs> I'm the host of Not a Real Court. Um, also, one of the owners of T13 Media, um, where we have a, we do like a lot of content creation, like podcasts, YouTube shows, all that sorts of fun stuff. Yeah, you guys are a fun bunch. I love being on Not a Court. Jeez. About, <laughs> <laughs> you, no, your guys' show is great because you do debating. You debate and you do the most fun contests. I love that. Like we talk about what are you the last show when I was on was breakfast foods. Uh right. yeah, you have nice championship of breakfast foods. It's fantastic. <laughs> and also talking about what we talk about, X-Men and um the X-Men uh, versus Justice League. Justice League. I almost said Legion. Yeah, right. <laughs> but those are good. I mean, like, it's such a super fun thing. So I thought, okay, there's a lot of stuff going on right now with birth control and with the sexuality, health and wellness um, genre that I live in. I could bring you over and we can talk from a male perspective and a female uh, perspective. And you're not a medical provider outside. You do other jobs. You do media right. stuff, right? <laughs> and like my non-media stuff is not <laughs> medical. <laughs> Right. So I wanted a real live guy who, Damone, you have how many kids? I have triplets. So I have three. Oh, gee, man, it's, it, you had them all at the same time. Okay. And so <laughs> you do have a partner, you have a wife that, yes. um, like she takes care of everything else and you just, you podcast and stuff right now. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> If you ask her, yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I understand. I get I get accused of of trying to go run off from podcasts and talk to other people all the time. <laughs> you know what? It's so much more fun than life, right? To podcast right. and talk about cool stuff like birth control. So the history of birth control, I mean, birth control has been out for several years. We know this since the 50s. So basically, um, what I wanted to talk with you about, because we're going to do this, you know, not a court style. We're going to debate. We're going to talk like what are good reasons why one person should be responsible over something like birth control. And we talk about pleasure on, on buried pleasures. Cause that's what I like to talk about. And sex is a pleasure, right? We all enjoy. Well, most people do. I won't say we all, most people enjoy a nice, healthy sexual relationship with their partner, whether you're monogamous, non-monogamous, however it goes, birth control is a huge part of, Hey, is this a fun night with, you know, just doing sex stuff or are we going to be committed forever and raise a child together? Right. These are <laughs> huge big things. And, you know, it really makes me think there's a condom commercial out there and I don't know, like I, I know I've seen it on TikTok or whatever. I can't remember where I've seen it, but there's a kid that's just running through the house, knocking stuff over and throwing food and doing all the terrible things. And then it's like, it's a condom commercial, right? It's Durex. It's either Durex it's, or Trojan. You're, it's Durex. It's Durex. Absolutely. So like, how smart is that <laughs> in itself? <laughs> because for a guy... You don't have to go get a medical exam to go get a condom, right? Like you just right. show up at the store and you get it. There is some statistical information out there that there are like 68% of women um, that were polled in this Indiana University uh, study that they did. 68% said um, it's totally the male's job to get condoms. Absolutely. 100%. That I mean, 68% of those 100% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> So when you, when you think of in the lines of just condoms, like the thing that, you know, that it has a pretty good rating for not getting girls pregnant. And also there's some protection there from some STDs, not all of them are STI. Right. Sorry. I'm old school. Yeah, it used to be sexually transmitted diseases. Now they're sexually transmitted infections. 
Yeah, when I was in school, it was S. Well, up until like my senior year of high school, uh-huh. it was STD, and then they changed it to STI. Gotcha. So when you did your, when you did that, you know, those classes, those health like things. Health, yeah. yeah. Did they tell you that abstinence was 100% the best way to go? Or did they really talk to you about different ways that you can, you could be safe? I went to, I went to a pretty, how do I put this? Ghetto school. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they talked about abstinence, but like they didn't really push it right. because there were kids, people who already had kids in like my high school. Sure. Um, and like they knew there were like most of the kids weren't going to practice abstinence. So like they talked about it, but they didn't really like push it. Like it wasn't like a abstinence, abstinence. I also remember like at one point, I remember they, I don't even remember, I don't think it was a school, but I remember they handed out like free condoms, like after school, it was either like a group or something like came to like the school and like they were handing out condoms to kids like as we were like getting on our buses and stuff (laughs) that's a little like so for me i think that that would be like the most funny and uncomfortable thing at the same time because you've got these people who are trying to teach you these things but they really don't talk to you about what sexuality really truly is what the like they just teach you the mechanical parts and how to like stop it like right right But they don't talk to you about how condoms don't stop um, herpes simplex virus, right? Because it's skin to skin contact. There are a couple other things that skin to skin contact that condoms, yeah, for a long time, we've learned that condoms were a good thing and they are. And I'm not saying that they're not, but there are some like other things that you can still get with, with using condoms. And we don't think about that often, but in your experience as a gentleman, because I know you are <laughs> such a gentleman. Um, past the free condoms, are you the guy who showed up for a date with condoms on you, or did you just automatically say it's her problem? What's up? <laughs> oh, so I'll be honest. When I was dating, I was there were definitely people who like the like the people I had sex with were people I was in a relationship with. Sure. So I'll be honest, there were definitely times where I didn't use protection at all Mm -hmm. because, and I was more, and when I did, it was more, I was less worried, I guess, about pregnancy and I was more worried about getting an STI. Sure. Sure. I get it. So for (laughs) like, for me, it was less about the pregnancy aspect or about the getting someone pregnant. And it was more about like making sure I don't get like aids or anything like that and i think like from the female perspective of that um i definitely 100 percent was petrified that i would ever get pregnant right like i had my first child when i was 23 years old i thought i was super young right um but just like you said i grew up in an impoverished place too and girls in my sixth grade class were pregnant right like so there's such a thing as like back then nobody really pushed women's health or, you know, really made it um, like now they have, they might have a really good friend. My friend Sunshine goes out to homes and visits new moms to make sure that they're doing okay with their babies. Right. That's something that um, is a, it's, it's a fantastic thing to do because man, not everybody Like not everybody's a nurse practitioner, right? Like there are people who don't know things. And, you know, you you look at commercials like um, just common sense things. To most people, some things are common sense things, but not everybody has that same level of mentality. Um, So some people just don't know. And, you know, if you're not looking at social media and you're not watching television and you live out in the middle of nowhere and you don't have the opportunities that other people have for information, you're kind of stuck with whatever it is that your mom or your grandma or your aunts told you or whoever, you know? So I think that like in, I will say for myself, hundred percent never um, thought in a million years that I was ever going to get an STD right? Or STI. Never thought about it because I came from a place where 
you know, again, just like you, you're in a, you're in a monogamous relationship, right? That's, well, that's what you tell yourself anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you're, just- yeah, as monogamous as you can be at 16 or whatever, you know, <laughs> like, like guys aren't sleeping with other girls whenever you're dating in high school and vice versa. Girls aren't sleeping with other guys. You know, we're all just together always, right? <laughs> right. Never break up or anything. Right. You never break up. But also I, I saw girls who had babies in high school and I, you know, like, that's a that's a wake up call right there, and it wasn't uncom. I mean, like it happened. It all it happened every year that I was right. in school. Somebody got pregnant every year. Knock on wood. Thank God it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, I mean, my mom would have. I, I'm sure, just like every other mom, tried to help me as much as she could if that happened. But that was just not, you know, not 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 what you do. You're not supposed right. to do that, right? Um, and I think I changed how I taught my kids based on that, but for my daughters, and I've talked about this on the show before abstinence in this area that we live in abstinence is absolutely the number one way that you should never, you know, you should never have sex. You're, um, it's just a little bit backwards to me in that fact. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) I, I feel like that's an unrealistic expectation. Like, yes, there are some people who are abstinent until they're married. Right. But like, I feel like that's a really low percentage of the population. So mm-hmm. to, like, to use that as the primary thing, right. because then you're if you're not teaching someone what happens if you do have sex. Right. You don't know like how to protect yourself right. because all you've been taught is don't have sex at all. Right. Right. And so it's smart. So, but, and one of the conversations we don't have with high school kids is, yeah, who is responsible for it? So in my mind, I think because I am a very strong and independent female, I am, who knew? (laughs) Um, I would think that regardless, I, you know, I was on birth control um, since I was a teenager, right? I always on the pill, but, um, but also my sister got pregnant when she was 16. So she wanted to get married. So that was a thing. Um, and so my parents were like, whatever you do, don't do that. Right. <laughs> like, just don't do it, please. This is enough. Um, so I, you know, like, again, I was like you, I had relation relationships, right? Like relationships, right. people that I had known or, you know, had been with for forever. Now, do I know for a fact? that see that's just the naivete of a, of a female thought when you're 16 he loves me and only me and he's never gonna sleep with anybody else right? right that's not that's not always the way it is though so when we're teaching about birth control i think that that would be a great addition to like if you both are feeling responsible that's probably the perfect scenario but does that ever happen again if women are not buying condoms you know then you're relying on any of the other, you know, like you can have birth control pills, you get IUD, whatever, you know, whatever apparatus that you choose right. to use, female condoms for that matter. But I don't think that I've ever, you know, been the girl that bought a box of condoms and left them in the dresser for people to come over and visit, right? Like that's just right. not a thing. I think that's kind of for me. And this is a personal thing. It's like admitting that you're really slutty if you're the girl who has a drawer full of condoms, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's not it's not slutty for a guy to have a drawer full of condoms, right? right? Yeah, there is like a double standard there. Totally. I, I also know in like college, we could go downstairs if we really wanted to, and then we could be like to the RA, be like, "Hey, can I get condoms?" And they would just hand them to you. Right. So like and like I know my roommate had like a whole drawer for all of Um right. but like I yeah, there is that stigma, especially with like women. Like if you have a if a guy has a bunch of condoms or a condom in his wallet, he's a player, right? He's a he's he's that guy. But if a girl does it, she must be a like a whore. Oh, right, whore. exactly. So if we're going past condoms and we're talking about birth control pills or an IUD or something to that nature, like that's a, that's an expense, right? You're, you have right. to go see a doctor or a nurse practitioner or, you know, who a medical provider, you have to have an exam, by the way, if you've never had a speculum exam, <laughs> 
Do you think going to the dentist is terrible? <laughs> <laughs> it's next level. I mean, it's a, it's like it's your personal space and somebody's violating it with something that is just not comfortable at all. And then you have the side effects from those things. Birth control pills, you you vomit, you can have, you know, gain weight. That's a big one for girls. Girls don't like right. to gain weight, just to throw that out there. Um, <laughs> generally speaking. Uh, you know, you have you have a lot of, you're taking a, an actual drug to keep you from being pregnant. That also messes with your body physically. And then, oh yeah, by the way, you add an IUD. Um, people are allergic to metal. People can have, you can have tears in your uterus. I mean, there are some really terrible things. Not that I'm saying that IUDs are the worst thing ever. They're not, they're wonderful. They work for a lot of people. They, I, you know, I probably have, oh my gosh, I have so many people that I know that you have IUDs because again, they're, it's a, put it in there. Don't worry about it. You won't get pregnant. Right. But does it stop STDs or STIs? No, it doesn't. So these are the things you have to think about as, you know, like we don't, uh, you and I, Damone, we don't have to think about any of that. We're stuck at home with, with no, <laughs> <laughs> that monogamy thing gets you sometimes, but no, you don't have to worry about that's sometimes it's really nice to have a monogamous relationship where True. you're not wor you don't have to worry. Right. Or at least we always theoretically. Think yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't want right. to cast no dispersions on your <laughs> wife. I'm sure she's a lovely lady and you have triplets and you should treat her like the goddess that she is. Jeez. I'm just thinking about how I have a one baby in there was just <laughs> terrible three at a time. And then, oh, okay. See, I have much respect for you, Demona. That's why I want you to come on my show. Um, because again, you have a, like, think about, where you were in your, in your college years and your thoughts about it. And now that you have those three children, I mean, like, where are you at in thoughts of what they're boys, right? Your triplets are they're girls. They're all oh, girls. they're girls. Oh, I thought you had yeah. boys. I'm so sorry. No, they're all girls. No, you're okay. Fine. So you have all these girls. What are you going to teach your girls? Are you going to leave it up to your wife to teach them? No, I think, well, I think it would be like both of us teaching them. Yeah. So I would, um, because you know what I, boys I, want. My, <laughs> my thought process is they teach them like sex is a thing. Like it's if you are going to have sex, protect yourself, use. Um, well, obviously, if you guys if they want to be on birth control, they they can. It's their choice. It's their body. Um, but if you are going to have sex, make sure the person you're having sex with has protection. You should also have protection just to be safe. Right. Like I think it's both person's responsibilities. It's kind of one of those, like, yes, you hope the guy, or if you're the girl, you hope the guy has it. And if you're the guy, you hope the girl has protecting yourself, but you should also have that fail safe and protect mm -hmm. yourself as well. And also like, it can't hurt to have the IU or yeah, the IUD and, or have her on the pill and be wearing a condom. It, it's double the protection. Right. It, like it's not going to hurt or anything. It's not going right. to ruin anything. Right. Um, it's better than not using protection, getting pregnant when you don't want to, or, mm -hmm. or with someone you don't want to have a baby with, or getting some sort of disease because you you assume the other person was clean right. or or didn't have anything, or you assume that the other person would have protection. Right. I'm looking forward to the day that um, we have, like your whole health history comes up, like you know, like. Um, what's it called? Black mirror stuff <laughs> where you can just look at their whole health history. No, I'm out, dude. No, I'm sorry. It says right here in 2020, you did this and no, um, that's a game changer for me, honey. No, <laughs> it just pops up like the Terminator. Yes. That's exactly what I'm waiting on. I mean, with all this AI stuff and all the cool <laughs> stuff that they're coming up with, I don't see why not, but so going back to the cost, right? The cost right. of who pays for this. So if you're in a relationship with somebody and the female says, okay, I'll go get on birth control. I know that you're going to be monogamous to me. <laughs> yeah. And so <laughs> I just, I've been married three times. It's a, it's a thing. <laughs> um, so you like the girl has to go see the doctor, right? You have to right. go have the exam. You have to go, you have to go monthly to buy your, or pick up your pills from the, the pharmacy. 
that's an expensive, like if you think about it, so the placement of an IUD, like is probably around 13, $1,500, depending on where you are. Um, birth control can be like, even if you have insurance can still cost you. So anywhere from like around $600 a year, like $50 a month, depending yeah, on your sure. insurance again. Right. Just if you have a copay, you right, have to pay that. Right. right. So you have all of these things when it's the girl's job to do it, right? Like that's the that's one of the things where I, I have to stop and think. And I've seen a couple of articles lately where, you know, when a guy and girl get into this relationship and say you're you've been dating for a year and you want to move in together. Well, you get an IUD, do you share the cost of it? And then whenever you move out or you break up, do you pay him back? <laughs> right. Like well, how does that work? <laughs> How is that going to ever work? I feel like it's one of those things where if you're in a committed relationship, it should probably be a split cost. It should be you both pay for it. But if you break up, it's just it's just you. It's part of. Yeah, it's like renting a hotel room. Right. right? (laughs) Yeah. Like like, it's kind of like if a girl gets like a, a breast implant and you pay for half of them and you break up, you can't like ask for a <laughs> refund. You can't take them out or get, take them back. Like it's just, it's part of, it's, right. It's sunken costs. You just gotta <laughs> you, you and move on. No, I'm taking them back. I'm taking them back. <laughs> <laughs> but that's one of those, like it becomes an expense. Not that condoms are, you know, they aren't without costs. I, you can get condoms more readily, you know, through the health department and that sort of thing. But there are a lot of places that just don't do that. There's a lot of places, like you said, you lived in inner city. I lived in rural nowhere. You, you don't just walk down the street and go to Planned Parenthood to pick up your morning after pill or your, you know, whatever it doesn't work that way right i live in the i live in a, the rural area now and yeah, yeah like right. i yeah it, like my wife has to go goes to her um gynecologist in the city which mm-hmm. is like an hour drive right so it's not like it's not an eat like a quick like oh just go sure go to the doctor whenever right. you want you need to it's you gotta so, make a trip of it Right. And so those are considerations whenever the conversation about who pays for contraception, it seems like, and this is not a man versus woman thing, but it seems like women are on the hook for making sure that things get done. Right. Or, and then you can talk about sterilization procedures, right? When a woman has a tubal ligation or a hysterectomy, that's, those are major surgeries, right? Those are, that's big time. When a guy gets a vasectomy, it's a little teeny cut in your testicle, and then they cut your vas deferens and burn it. You don't open up your entire abdomen. I'm just not salty about it at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, like the cost for a vasectomy versus the an open tubal ligation, or you know, like even a lap tubal ligation. You, it's it's a pretty tough thing, and a lot of times when they do, um, like when you have a baby for females you go back in after you've had the baby, you go back in to have your tubal ligation done. These are all like, these are major big surgeries. They can cause you scar tissue. They can cause you to have problems forever. Not to say that you can't have a botched um, vasectomy that can happen, but the risk for females is exponentially higher. And it's just a really, like, it's such a funny thing to be talking about this, especially with you. I'm sure you're just like, oh my gosh, what'd this girl get me into today? (laughs) 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 But I knew you would have a, like, you have an open mind and you don't have a medical, like, that's the, what I'm looking for is like a real honest opinion from a man who has triplets for God's sakes. (laughs) Contraception is probably a big deal in your house in this moment. (laughs) Well, I also have kind of a unique perspective. Um, so I have, um, what's it called? Azospermia, mm-hmm. like where I, I, so I actually am infertile. Okay. So when we, to have the girls, we ended up using a donor. Gotcha. So she still does do, she still uses birth control, uh-huh. mostly to just in, just in case if something were like a miracle were to happen right. I gotcha. or, and also to deal with her period so that sure. she doesn't get yeah. her period. Right. While she has an IUD. So, um, that's we, so I kind of have like a unique perspective when it gotcha. comes to that. So like, Man. We, thanks for, for sharing that. Part, no, you're fine. Really cool. Thank uh, you. You're welcome. 
Um, so we for the we don't really use condoms sure. because I'm not like we are monogamous and I'm not worried about getting her pregnant. Right. But I will say looking back before I knew that, because before we knew that I was sterile, mm-hmm. we that we did weren't using condoms. And like I said, in previous relationships, I didn't always use them. It wasn't the smartest thing because if I wasn't sterile, I definitely might have had a kid earlier yeah. or I could have definitely caught something. Gotcha. Right. But you don't think like when you're a teenager, though, I mean, honestly, you don't think about those kinds of things. Now, honestly, for me, the pregnancy thing was 100 percent because I just was not going to get any other thing. I knew it. What a dumb thing. What like literally what a dumb thing to think. Right. Right. Just because I lived in rural America. Yeah, I was not going to get anything because only city people get stuff like that. You know, (laughs) girls who don't go to church. Girls who don't have sex when they're 16, you know what I mean? Like, hmm. anyway, um, I think that it's a, a, you know, such a good topic. You should, you totally need to do this on your show now. <laughs> <laughs> Who's responsible? I'd love to hear, like, I, that's what we have to do. I have to like poll Mike and Kenny and say, Hey, what do you guys think? But <laughs> because it is really, it's different. Like you were saying, right. it's different. It's a different thought. You weren't thinking about the pregnancy part, right? At all. Right. I wasn't thinking about the STI part at all because, well, probably number one, because I didn't really know because I came from a very religious home where we did not talk about those things. You didn't do them. You don't have sex until you're married, you know? And, you know, magically you just wake up one day and you know everything about sex stuff. Um, (laughs) Ta-da! Married, you just know everything. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, or you hear the terrible stories from girls who are just a few years older than you that got married that are like, oh my God, this is torture. It's the worst thing ever, you know, because they don't know, like, there's no pleasure in the sexual part because they, they didn't know about it. Right. Right. And that's a kind of sad, that's kind of a sad, terrible way to have to live your life, which I think we live in such a better time, such a, such, I know it's, I say it's a nice time right now. It's not really that nice, but it's better for some things. The fact that I I feel like my kids can come and talk to me about that kind of thing is really, um, that's probably one of the best things, but I always tell them. I tell my kids to make sure that they have their own stuff with them, like contraception, whatever, like figure it out. But do know that again, condoms don't always stop everything. I also think the internet helps too now because Mm now like that information is way more reasonably accessible. Mm -hmm. So like you can just Google like SDI or like what happens if, you do this and like you can Google those sorts of things. Right. As opposed to like in the eight, the nineties and like before then, before the internet, <laughs> you, you had to, someone had to tell you. Right. Right. Someone before. To like go to the library. And I don't right. know any kids that are going to the library to look up like sex, sex education. Stuff. Right. Oh my God. Could you imagine? We probably didn't have those books. No, we probably did. I don't they, know. They might have. <laughs> Well, I'm just saying, like, like, you're so right, because again, the so I got my first email address in 1991 when I was a freshman at University of Kentucky. And so (laughs) we had the brother printer, what are they, the word processors, we didn't even have, you know, like, we were were a step up from typewriters, because it had a little screen about this big. (laughs) And you could type on there and it printed it out. It was so cool. It was so much better than a typewriter. I don't know why we loved that. But anyway, um, yeah, so the internet has helped tremendously with in some positive and negative ways. True. But also whenever you have like, definitely have I ever seen patients that will come in and say, oh, I think I like I have a sore on my penis. My penis is kind of sore, <laughs> right? And they could have, they zipped themselves up in their, you know, pants. But then you have to do the whole cascade of, okay. Who have you been with? Like this could be a herpes lesion. It could be a syphilis lesion. Syphilis is really big in the Ohio area where I'm living currently. Um, we treat that a lot here. And there's so many antibiotic resistant gonorrhea. I mean, like there's definitely antibiotic resistance to a lot of these STIs and it's scary business. 
So in terms of uh, who's paying for contraception first and foremost, know your partner and, and trust them. I mean, I'm all about having wild, crazy, like just run into somebody sex. It sounds really great. It's great to read in a book or whatever, but also you should be like, you got to think about it, dude. You I mean, like, I'm not saying dude to you, but <laughs> you got to think about what you're doing. If right. you're just going to be jumping in and out. And again, if you're in a polyamorous relationship or you're a swinger or whatever, like most of the swinger couples that I've ever had on the show or that I talked to in my, you know, in my teaching, they are people who like, if you don't show your recent results from your STD report or STI reports, you're not having sex with them. It's not going to happen. So as long as we can have a good conversation about it and really talk about it. And if you are in a relationship now and you feel like you're being slighted because you're paying, if you're the female and you're paying for all the birth control, talk to your partner about it, like be real and figure out a plan because the better you communicate about these things, the better your relationship is. And, you know, don't make it just about you make it about both of you. Or right, you're all five of you, however it goes. Or, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're having sex with it. Right. Right. Just make it like make it a conversation because in in the long run, everybody's happy because you're you're setting up boundaries and nobody's gonna get their feelings hurt when you know, like if a pregnancy does occur or you know, an STI occurs, people have to be accountable for their actions and it's important. So Damone, you say that both people are responsible for yes. birth control. Both people are responsible. I'll agree with that. But also remember this, you are the only one responsible for you. So get True. your shit together, right? right. <laughs> get, yeah. Make, make sure, sure. Even if, if the you hope the person you're with is being responsible too, but cover yourself. Cover yourself. Don't, don't assume. Facts. Facts. Simone, it's so nice to have you on my show. Can you tell the folks out there all about where they can find you? Um, you can find me personally at on Twitter and TikTok at dumb money t13. That's D A M O N E Y T the number one and number three. And all but all the shows I'm on, you can find all of that at T13 Media. So T the number one, three spelled out, media.com. Nice. And you want to do a shout out for all your fellas on your, on your, not a quarter. Oh, yeah. So you court can, court. yeah, you can. Um, so Kenny's show is, well, his, so he has the bad guy spoken. He has unbiased, which is a rest or football show. He also has hood movie reviews. I can't sing. So I'm going to try. <laughs> um, and then we also have geek in the sheets that Mike hosts, which is like, geek stuff so like horror and comics and anime and video games all that stuff where they review those sorts of things and like news and all that stuff and all that stuff again you can find at t13media.com awesome it's a pleasure having you here and just so everybody remembers i am polly and amazing you can find me at berrypleasures.com berry pleasures on facebook instagram tiktok twitter all of them find me listen to me Thank you. <laughs> and remember, be smart about your contraception, everybody. All right. Thanks, Simone. <laughs> Thank right. you for having me. Bye. Bye. Just some podcast media.